Hello everybody, and welcome to another album episode. Today, we are not going to be talking about a soundtrack, um, but this is very much in the theme of, like, spooky, you know, October-ish stuff. So, I wanted to show you guys today, and this was a gift from my friend Rachel. Um, if you seen her ASMR channel. It is called Crinkle Love and ASMR. And um, she does a, a lot of really spooky type of horror uh, ASMR videos. She does like a bunch of other stuff too. But her horror videos are fantastic. So I will link her channel if you want to check it out. I'll link it in the description. So um, thank you so much if you're watching this. I listened to this album, this entire album one day when I was organizing my room and just going through my things and they have some really awesome like instruments like um, all of their, all their instrumental work is just beautiful and it's um, like a genius, it's genius and my name is in the title of the band, Prim And I love the art on the cover. I love it. And we'll get into that in just a minute. First, I want to trace this. I love these big bulky letters. And the outline is yellow, which is like my favorite color. So, let's trace the P. Let's trace the R. Let's trace the I. Let's trace the M. Let's trace the U. Let's trace the S. Premise. And if you've never heard of this band, or never listened to them, I'll put some of their songs down in the description, ones that I really enjoyed and stuff. Um, now, when Rachel gifted this to me, she said that she loves to listen to this when she is doing something She said something very specific, though, and I don't want to, like, say it wrong, but what I got from what she told me is this is a good band to listen to when you're working on art, when you are trying to get creative, you know, when you are, um, doing something very motivational and inspirational. So, um, we're gonna look at the art on this so neat. Now, before we go and talk about the cover of this, the art on this, um, I just want to say you guys are going to flip out when you see the vinyl. Okay, that's all I'm going to say right now. Like, it is so cool. Um, it's probably like one of the coolest vinyls I've seen. So, stay tuned for that. I won't make you wait like a whole long time to see it, but um, I do want to say a couple things first and show you the front and the back. Um, so, this is the album name is The Desaturating Seven. The Desaturating Seven. Desaturating Seven. The Desaturating Seven. And there are seven goblins. There's one. Hold it closer so you can see it. Three, four, five, six, seven. And they are all at this table made of stone. And they have a map, it looks like, or a picture that has been rolled up for a long time because you can see the little ends curled in. Um, and it has a rainbow right on there. And then you can see a rainbow behind them, too. There's little glasses. They each have their own little cup. This guy's cup spilled. I think he made it. I had a little bit too much of this cup. Um, but they're so cool. This one is like a purple, like a dark, shiny purple. Um, and he looks very mischievous. They all do, actually. They all look very, like they're up to something because their eyes are all like, you know, crazy looking. 
these two are the same color blue, so it makes me think, okay, maybe they're twins or something. They're twin goblins. This guy is a very dark, rustic, golden yellow color. He is my favorite, I think, just because I like the color and he looks, you know, he looks like he's in charge of things. He's the one that's holding the map of the rainbow. He's the one that's in the middle of the table. It looks like he's the leader. There's this guy. He's green. And they're also detailed, like their face. You know, they've got all these different um, facial features, these wrinkles on their face. Goblin wrinkles. It's so cool. So then over here, you got the orange and the red one, and they're kind of talking amongst each other. Like, what is this guy over here doing? You know? They're all having like a little goblin party. It's just a really cool scenery. I love the artwork on that. So, I'll hold it up closer so that you guys can see it a few different angles. Just really, really neat. Okay. I love the colorfulness and the, along with the primitive stone rustic vibe. It's really cool. Back has a bunch of things for us to read, and then I'll read the songs. So, the Desaturating Seven, inspired by Ul de Rico's The Rainbow Goblins, a record of treachery and virtue. Okay, so I'm gonna read this little paragraph right here. Once there was a land that lived in fear of seven goblins. The goblins fed on color. They prowled the valleys and climbed the highest mountains looking for rainbows. And when they found one, they caught it in their lassoes and sucked the colors out of it, filling their bellies with its bright liquid. Only one place in the land had never known goblin fear, the hidden valley called the Valley of the Rainbow, where great arches of color were burnt were born. There, the animals lived in paradise, dot, dot, dot. And then signed, um, Ulderico. I hope I pronounced that right. Ulderico. Okay. And then there is three songs on side A and four songs on side B. They're all in different colors, and to me, I'm, I'm thinking each color represents the different goblin. So, um, so now that I'm looking at it, since there's two different colors of blue here, you can see a lighter blue and a darker blue, maybe these two goblins are different colors. I think this is the darker blue, and this one's a little lighter. Just a little tiny speck lighter. So, in, um, written, written, written in red is a song the valley. And I would like to think that that represents this red goblin here. And let's see, the second song on side A is called The Seven. And it's in orange. So maybe it's kind of like that guy's theme song or something. Okay, and then the one, the yellow, is The Trek. There's the yellow goblin. Okay, and then side B, there's four songs. The first one is in green lettering, and it says the scheme. So maybe that one belongs to this guy. And then the light blue lettering is called the dream. And I assume if they each have their own theme songs, then that it would go to this one right here. This silly, goofy one. And then in dark blue writing, it's called The Storm. So perhaps it goes to this darker blue goblin. And then in purple, it's called The Ends with a question mark. So maybe that one goes to this one. So I'll read through again since I kind of, you know, read them and then talked about the goblins. I'll read them in order again. 
valley, the seven, the trek, the scheme, the dream, the storm, the ends. So, that's really cool. And the year on this is 2017, and it says Prawn Song Records under exclusive license in North America to ATO Records, LLC. And, oh wow, um, at the bottom it says premisefield.com. So they even have their own dot com. They only they have their own website, you know. So that's really cool. And I'm not sure if you can see it on the video, but there is a whole scenery on this, and it's very faded. It's very it's very faded. So you can kind of make it out. I think there's a rainbow back here. There's some trees along the side. I see plenty of different birds, beautiful birds, and clouds up in this corner. It looks like a foggy, smoky, dark day. Maybe it just got, well, it probably just got done raining since there's a rainbow right there. And then down here I see trees and I see water. I see water and the reflection of the rainbow down here. Almost like a um, never or a scene Bob Ross painting, like a wicked painting from Bob Ross or something. That's what it's reminding me of. Then down in this corner, I'm gonna hold it closer so that you can see it better and maybe change the lighting. Okay, there we go. So, you can see all these different animals on this mountain, and there's trees. take this sleeve out. Oh gosh, it's so cool. And I'm going to show you the inside of the album. I thought this was so cool when I first seen it, and it's like melted crayons, you know? If you've ever seen those art projects, like on Pinterest, or just, they've been, I've seen in videos on Facebook even, stuff. Um, it looks like that melted crayon, rainbow melted crayon. It looks so cool. I'm gonna set that down and show you guys the sleeve. And the sleeve is a less faded version of the back of the album cover. Um, but kind of like from a different viewpoint, the sky's yellow. Oh gosh, I love that. The sky's yellow and you can see different mountains and different hills and rocks and branches and birds. some cute birds in the tree, but no, they're those tiny little goblins. And I will hold it closer so that you can see too. Look, they're so tiny compared to the rest of the scenery. Oh my gosh, they're so little. That makes them ten times cuter than I originally even thought. I'm like, looking at them close up, they're so tiny. lyrics um, to each of the songs here. I think that's so nice when they include that. Let's see at the top what it says. Produced and engineered by Les Claypool. Lyrics and music by Les Claypool. Larry uh, Lalande, Lalande on guitars. Tim Alexander on drums and percussion. Uh, Les Claypool on bass and vocals. Um, let's see. Uh, Justin Chancellor as the Goblin Master. Recorded and mixed at Rancho Relaxo. Rancho Relaxo. Uh, Sublim 
supplemental material recorded at SESH, West Venice, California, Venice, California, mastered by Stephen Marcusen for Marcusen, 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 Masterpiece, or Mastering, sorry, um, Hollywood, California, Management, Brad Sands, Red Light Management, assisted by Jason Gibbs and Tom. Artwork by Ulderico and design and layout by Agent O. Ogden. Agent Ogden. So this was another band that I had never heard of. I wasn't familiar with them at all. And then when she told me about them and sent me this album, I was introduced to them for the first time ever. So that's awesome. Uh, I honestly don't know if they're like more rare. I'll go, I'll go my whole life listening to something and then never hearing about another thing, so this is brand new to me. Um, I'm gonna look up some facts, though, and read, like, when they were formed as a band. That way, if you are just now being introduced to them, uh, you know, you can learn about them with me as well, and we can all be introduced to it at the same time. Um, so... Let me just read to you. Well, before I do that, let me just go ahead and show you the the vinyl because I've kept you guys waiting in suspense long enough. Like, check this out, guys. It's a clear vinyl with rainbow splattered colors on it. I don't want to say paint because it's probably not paint. It's like, I don't know what that is made out of, but that is just so cool. And it's not just clear. It's almost got this uh, shiny, like, like sugar cane candy melted into the vinyl or something and it's hard to really see how beautiful it is on camera but looking at it with a naked eye there's like it's almost like it's glistening the not the paint or not the colors but the actual clear you know vinyl it's like it's shining like sparkling or something i don't know um it's just so cool and in the middle is really cool too. It's like detailed with these different colors of smoke. Yellow, green, blue, violet, and then it goes into like a black and a brown. So that's just really cool. And then the other side is the same exact thing. Um, so that's just really I think this is probably my top. I don't know, this might be my very favorite, favorite, like, vinyl, like how it looks. Um, I really loved the Blue Oyster Cult, like the shiny blue vinyls too, that was just so cool. Um, I like vinyl art, you know. I've looked up online different vinyl art. The ones that I've seen are really cool. Um, let's see, Friday the 13th, they have a vinyl with um, blood splatter, like red splatters on it. I think that one's really cool. And then, let's see, Clueless, the movie soundtrack for Clueless, which I wish I had that. Um, but you can only find the one with the plaid vinyl. You can only find it on like rare occasions, I think. But I just, I think that's so neat when they go into the detail and do these extra little touches. It's awesome. So, I'm going to slide this back into the cover. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at some facts about this band. Okay, so 
so I already have it pulled up on my phone. So, um, let's see. Let's see, Primus is an American funk metal band from El Sobrante, California. Um, currently composed of bassist and vocalist Les Claypool, guitarist Larry Lur Lalande, and drummer Tim Herb Alexander. And I'm sorry if I mispronounced any of that. Um, I'm very new to this band, like I said, so I'm sorry if I butchered those names a little bit. Um, so, what I'm seeing right now is albums that they've done before, and it looks like they've been around since the that's what I can see. That's crazy that I never heard of them because, you know, I've listened to tons of 90s music. Um, so, the, name of, the names and the art of these different albums are really cool. Uh, let's see, one's called Pork Soda, that's from 1993. One's called Frizzle Fry, and that's from 1990. Uh, Sailing the Seas of dot dot dot, I can't read it unless I click on it. That was from 1990. And then this one was 2017, so I believe this one's their newest album. Um, there's one, Tales from the Punch Bowl, 1995, and then Brown Album, 1997. So, so far, I've only listened to this album. I haven't went and delved into their other, you know, music, the discography of Primus. But, uh, I'm gonna take a look at the other albums, because those look really look really interesting to me. Um, so, let's see if we can find some facts. Okay, so the year is active, it says from 1984 to 2000, and then they picked back up in 2003 and went to 2006, and then back in 2008, and then back in 2010, and they've been around since then. So all in all, they've been around since 1984 to the present. So that's really cool. Um, and then it just names the band members again and things like that. So that's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, so I will put some links to some songs by them if you want to check them out. And again, thank you so much to Rachel for sending me this. Oh, it's so, so, so neat. Uh, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. And I'll be back next week with another album. So, I hope you guys are taking care of yourself and having a great, great October. I will talk to you guys very, very soon. Okay. Good night.